Sampai, sampai. That what, but, but one could make the same argument yeah. with uh, with what George Bush did, getting us into <laughs> into this costly war that we should have never been into. No, no. Good morning. That's we want to welcome you this morning to the Drainage District Board of Directors meeting for today, November the 6th, 2012. President our Commissioner Palacios Precinct uh, 2, Commissioner Palacios Precinct 4, and myself, we have a quorum. Uh, is there any, anybody uh, signed up? Not that I'm aware of, sir. No, sir. All right, then let's move on to our consent agenda. Any concerns? No concerns on the check register. Move for approval of the consent agenda. Check. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item four, approval uh, of the 2012 tax rolls. We're requesting no action at this time on item number four, sir. At the request of the, the Is district. Is there a deadline? Uh, I mean, the, the tax office is the one that requested no action on it, sir. So there you I mean, I'm, I'm assuming the tax statements are going to be going out pretty quick. Uh, I would assume. I just got notified this morning, sir. <laughs> okay. I well, will get more information from the board and have the, the tax office contact y'all individually as to why they weren't ready. Okay. Then we'll pass it. On uh, item five, again, uh, no action on A, B, or C until the county does their final uh, consideration and ranking. Ms. Salasada is here in case the board has a question. Yes, as I discussed with each one of you yesterday on the, on the uh, county side, let's wait for discussion on the item on the county's agenda. And this may have to be uh, postponed for one week, but we will discuss that at the county agenda. All right. At this time, I ask for no action on this side. But what are we doing to address the concerns? Like, I mean, the, the companies are there. There should be no coverage for pre-existing conditions. That's a big one. Correct. Uh, that is being discussed right now with the existing vendors. It would be an option for us on our negotiation side. Also, Judge, there is there are positive options here. Uh, that uh, that can that can happen, but I need a week to get information from the existing vendors on offering those people who currently do have policies that are being that benefits are being paid for to remain. Right. They cannot, of course, those vendors cannot uh, attract new sales. They would just keep the existing. If they're getting coverage right now, and just because we moved to a new company, now they're, they're going to be dropped. That doesn't sound like the right thing Well, that's thing why I am, uh, we are actively communicating with current vendors to make that possible. This historically happened once before with the county, many years ago. Uh, however, because we've had a current vendor that had very good renewals for us, we've only, uh, we haven't had this happen in quite a number of years, at least 10 years. So also, uh, we were talking. Uh, I think that wanna, one week yeah. will make a bring world. It up? Commissioner Actually, Palacios had a. Uh, I just had a simple question. I'm not a specialist in the insurance world, but uh, as an employee, when we're talking about cafeteria plans and all these different insurance companies that have all these different products, I thought that the best thing should have been, or that the, the county must consider or should consider, is the fact that you rank them based on whoever ranking system you have, Correct. and have the top one, two, or three offer that they be able to offer their service through the enrollment process where you give the employee a choice whether they're, they want to stay with the existing one that they currently have coverage with or someone new based on the product themselves and let them choose. Correct. But at this point, an existing company must agree to stay on. Okay? I believe we're getting what? positive feedback. We're, be get, we're getting positive, but we haven't been able to reach all of the current vendors. That's why I think one week will make a world of difference in bringing the some existing options. existing company to, must agree to what? To stay and to continue covering those that are currently buying the product from them. Well, I'm getting some, I am getting some positive responses so far that companies are going to issue letters that they will stay on and keep those pre-tax products for those who currently buy them. All right. I think that one week will give us a lot of positive uh, options for the court and the uh, board to consider. What concerns me is making a change in the vendor and the 
employee who is under the plan is already under treatment for some Exactly, ailment. exactly. And I would recommend that we do that to the employee. And that's so exactly what I'm addressing, that, uh, yeah. Commissioner. That's okay. exactly what I'm addressing. So right. by next Tuesday, I shall have word on the companies that currently have products and benefits are being paid if they will stay on. This happened once before, many years ago, where that option was made available to people who had the product. They cannot solicit new uh, new employees, but they will keep, uh, that will permit that the current employees that have their products continue on the same, in the same policy. Well, Marty, what will this do though? What, is the county limited at this point in time for the one, the new vendors that are coming in to where the county is giving the employee the choice now based on a criteria? The new vendors that are coming in will first of all need to be ranked, okay? Secondly, I have confirmed that on our RFP, the county did request a no loss, no gain option. Some companies are requiring, are denying pre-existing conditions, the new ones that are ranked. We need to rank them first and then negotiate with those companies. That is something that we would, I'd be given direction from the court to seek that that be dropped. Okay, it's going to make it difficult. It, it, it would make be in their best interest. However, this would be for new options. Yes. When does our present contract expire? Uh, our effective date is February first. Oh, we got plenty of time. Well, no, the, the the timing, not really, because then you start thinking about the enrollment process. I think we can. We need to finish it up this month. We need November. to finish it up this month. All right. Well, good. But well, I do feel that a week is going to give us a lot of different options to explore. Marty. Yes, sir. Is there a need to do anything with the committee? Do we need to react? No, I think they've it? done. No, well, I think they've done their job. Uh, if I find that the committee needs to 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 do further work, I certainly will report that next week. At this point, I'm not in a position to tell you that the committee needs so to do, do more work. So we do have time. Limited, but yes, we do. Are you going to offer them a choice of uh, offering pre-existing condition coverage? Certainly when we get to that point of negotiations, that will be an offer. That, but I want to make sure the court understands what options we do have in leverages and, and uh, negotiations right. with the new ranked vendors. But All I think right. a week will give us that information. All right. We'll defer any action yes, sir. another week. Yes, sir. Or if you need couple of weeks to, you know, to make sure you Oh, certainly. Them. No, and I'll report to the court. I'll keep you abreast of how the information is coming in. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. On to item number six. Number six, after a discussion with the uh, legal counsel and at the recommendation of the board, presentation of scoring grid of the firms evaluated through the district's pool of surveys for the purpose of ranking by Adult County Drainage Number 1, Board of Directors, in connection with surveying services for West Main Drain, extension east of Ware Road and Mile 9. The three firms that were ranked were Quintanilla Hadley and Associates at 96, Tedsy Infrastructure Group at 90, and R. Gutierrez Engineering at 88. Move for approval. Commissioner? Check. All right, those in favor of the motion is made in second, indicate by saying aye. 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 The motion carried. Item B, requesting authority to negotiate serving service contract with the number one ranked firm of Quintanilla Hadley and Associates for the provisions of serving services that relates to the West Main Drain extension east of Ware Road and Mile 9. Move for approval. Uh, Godfrey. Yes, sir. Would you need uh, authorization to negotiate with the first one and go to the second one? If you Basically, we will we'll come back to the board if negotiations fail with the number one ranked firm. After we negotiate, we will come back to the board for an execution of the contract. That is the way the process was laid out. What if in the event you cannot negotiate uh, a contract with them? Mr. Crane? Can we do it again? We'll have to come back to the board and get the board's permission to proceed with negotiations with the second highest ranked firm. That way the board keeps in the loop continuously if we're not successful in negotiations with the number one ranked firm. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. 
Item C, presentation of scoring grid of the firms evaluated through the district's pool of appraisers for the purpose of ranking by Idaho County Drainage Number 1 Board of Directors in connection with appraisal services for West Main Drain Extension east of Ware Road in Mile 9. Two firms are Lionel Garza and Associates at 96 and George J. Salazar appraisals at 89. Godfrey, who ranked these? Basically, we called your office commissioner and asked if they wanted to, uh, were able to rank them. They asked us to go ahead and rank them in-house. So Sylvia Sanchez, the administrative assistant for the district, did the ranking. Okay. Move for approval. Check. Motion in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item D, requesting authority to negotiate appraisal service contract with the number one ranked firm of Lionel Garza and Associates for the provisions of appraisal service as it relates to the West Main Drain extension east of Ware Road and Mile 9. Move for approval. Check. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item E, request approval of 2013 proposed holidays. It's just a concurrence action similar to what the commissioner's court approved for the county side. We took out Columbus Day. Is that yes, the sir. same thing? Yes, All right. sir. Probably. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. We have no item on closed session unless the board wishes to entertain one. We need a motion adjourn. to adjourn. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much, Judge Commissioner. Thank you. We'll be in uh, recess for a short while until, uh, uh, well, until 9.30, 9.35, hopefully. Yeah, you're talking about the drainage. Right. The yeah. policy is not going to come
Good morning. We want to welcome you this morning to the regular Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court meeting for today, November the 6th, 2012. Present our commissioners, Palacios Precinct 2 and Palacios Precinct 4 and myself. We have a quorum. Please arise and join us in our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Townsend, please. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege of being here in this nation at this time to come together to work for our county and for all the things that we're concerned about. We ask you to bless our nation, bless all the fighting men and women who go leave their homes and go do what they need to do to help us in this country. We ask you to bring some rain, dear Lord, on this part of the valley which we need so badly. And we thank you for all your blessings. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you. All right, our consent agenda. Are there any concerns, Mr. Uh, yes, Judge. I would like to ask that consent agenda item 2I, 2T, 3F, 3G, 6B, and 7B be pulled for discussion? So moved. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, what is 2I about, sir? Cons consent agenda, agenda item uh, 2I, it, there's a uh, typo on the agenda caption. Uh, it lists fund 1100 and it should be fund 1200. Uh, the same thing with the uh, 2T. Agenda caption reads uh, 1200 and it should be 1100. So those two I recommend approval, we'll for approval for the, with, with the a correction. With a correction, so those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, consent agenda item 3F and 3G are somewhat related, Judge. And that has to do with uh, it's a inner department of transfer. And those transfers are being made to cover engineering costs. However, the, uh, there's not sufficient funding in place for the construction of the projects. And to me, it just uh, doesn't make sense that you're going to fund a project for engineering when you don't have any funding in place for the construction of the project. And recommendation is what? Recommendation is to take no action on those two items. Trouble. You need a second? Second. That's a that's both 3F and 3G. 3F and 3G, correct. All right, those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 aye motion carries unanimously. Uh, okay, consent agenda item 6B, uh, another point of information is just the, uh, the agenda caption has a typo. Uh, you read CR 285 and it should be CR 825. So just uh, recommend approval with the correction. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Consent agenda item 7B, another point of information. The uh, supporting documentation indicates that the cost is $150 per hour. However, the actual cost is $165 an hour. So I would like to recommend approval with the correction. The, you're talking about under budgetary impact, the amount 150 was typed in. The supporting documentation states it'll be 165. Correct. So it should be one, uh, one. The actual is 165. The new year's renewal would be at 165. Under budgetary, they use the old figure. That's the only. But it was stated under well, budgetary. The new the supporting documentation is correct. Second. It's 165. We do need to correct it. Correct. Yeah. No, actually, it was just that it was noted wrong on the caption under budgetary impact. There's nothing that's incorrect. You have no problem if we move it to 165 and address it. It has to be 165. Double. Yes. All right. We have a motion and a second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Marty. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Item number 5A. We have this morning 
the honor of the presidents of the members of the McAllen School Board who have recently been recognized as the School Board of the Year by the Texas Education Agency. We're very proud of them here in our county. Out of uh, I don't know how many school districts, 1,000, over 1,000 school districts in Texas and uh, McAllen School District Board of Trustees was recognized as the outstanding board, um, school board of the year. We certainly want to congratulate them. And this morning, uh, oh, Ms. Chapa, can you go ahead and proceed? I am very proud this morning to introduce to you the McAllen ISD Board of Trustees. If you'll come stand up here, we, uh, I will read the resolution that the county has prepared for you. And for the benefit of the members of the audience that may not be aware, Ms. Yolanda Chapa is a former superintendent of the McAllen School District. But we're not telling age secrets. This resolution reads, in honor of the McAllen Independent School District Board of Trustees, whereas the McAllen Independent School District Board of Trustees has received the state's highest honor for a Board of Trustees being named the 2012 Outstanding Board of the Year at the Texas Association of School Administrators, Texas Association of School Board State Convention. And whereas in receiving this award, McAllen ISD advanced through three levels of state competition. First, winning the title of 2012 Region 1 School Board of the Year, then 2012 Honor School Board of Texas, one of only five in the state, and concluding with being selected first among the more than 1,000 school districts in Texas. And whereas McAllen ISD has drawn state and national action and acclaim in education circles and the public arena for its efforts to introduce mobile learning devices to every child, thus transforming teaching and learning for the 21st century learner. And whereas the McKellen ISD Board of Trustees earned this award due to its innovative success with the TLC3 framework, which provides cutting edge technology to each student, encouraged them to embrace technology and develop 21st century skills. And whereas embracing technology has led to McAllen ISD becoming part of the League of Innovative Schools, a nationwide consortium of just 26 school districts with just two in the state of Texas, identified as being at the forefront of these efforts and selected for the Texas High Performance Schools Consortium. 23 districts tasked with advising the governor, the education commissioner, and the state legislator. And whereas the McAllen ISD Board of Trustees is composed of President Hilda Garza de Chaso. Will you stand up here so I can see? You? Vice President Eric de la Gar Erica de la Garza. Secretary Debbie Crane Aliceda. Dr. Joseph Caparuso. Javier Farias. Sam Saldiva Jr. Danielle Vela, and Superintendent Dr. James Ponce. The Board of Trustees have worked hard to lead McAllen ISD towards a path of higher academic and technological achievement, transforming the educational opportunities for their students, the faculty, the staff, and community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Hidalgo Count Commissioner's Court hereby recognizes and honors the McAllen Independent School District Board of Trustees for their outstanding service, dedication, and commitment to the students, the citizens of Hidalgo County. Dated this sixth day of November, 2012, by Judge, County Judge Ramon Garcia, County Commissioner Precinct 1, Joel Quintanilla, County Commissioner Precinct 2, Hector Tito Palacios, County Commissioner Precinct 3, Joanne Flores, County Commissioner Precinct 4, Joseph Palacios, and the County Clerk, Arturo Guajardo, Jr., will attest to this. Move so, for approval. Second. So, Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. <laughs> Would you care to say a few words? On behalf of the entire 
Board of Trustees and McAllen ISD, Judge Garcia and Commissioners, thank you so much for having us here this morning and thank you so much for your recognition. It is truly an honor for me to stand here before you and share this with the entire region. This is all for Region 1 and of course the City of McAllen and the School District of McAllen. But we are very truly blessed with a great leader, great kids, great teachers, and we are just very happy to have won this award. Thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, Dr. Clemson. Good morning, and again, I want to thank you all for uh, recognizing the efforts of the school board. You know, uh, a lot of times in the opening speech, I get, you know, by, by law, you're supposed to have the school board, but there's a lot of the nuances that, 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 that aren't taken into account. Uh, the countless hours that they spend uh, most of the time at the expense of their families, uh, the, the, the time they invest in studying and being ready. and you know, McAllen has gone out on the limb on, on the, on the uh, school finance. They've gone on the limb on, this, on the local control. So there's a lot of those things that show leadership beyond just the times they meet twice, 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 a, twice a month. So very proud of their effort, very proud of their work, very proud of their leadership in showing that, uh, you know, as we say, you know, when, when we represent the valley a lot of times, when you have something, you're representing not only your town, you're representing the county, you're representing the valley. So very much so proud of their efforts and look forward to continued success and making things happen for the children of McAllen ISD. So thanks again for the recognition. Thank you. <laughs> Commissioner, are there any comments? No, I just want to thank them for the work that they do. I, we were, uh, we had the pleasure of attending their school board meeting. It was nice. It was the first time I was there, but I appreciate the uh, support that you gave us on the bond referendum. But we appreciate all that you do and everything you do for your kids. Thank you. Now, just to echo what Commissioner Palazzo said, and you have somebody in the audience I see over there, Senator Lucio, and uh, he's all ears about <laughs> the presentation. So keep that in mind, Senator, when, when they go to Austin. Well, Thank you. on behalf of the County Commissioner's Court and the residents of Hidalgo County, we sincerely want to express our gratitude for the work that you do. As was pointed out by Dr. Ponce, we certainly don't need to be reminded, but we should be stressing the fact that all this is volunteer work, public service, done the proper way. It takes countless of hours of dedicated, conscientious uh, work and effort in order to achieve the kind of success you obviously have demonstrated the capacity to do and to help put our Valley education on the map. Education is the one thing that has really helped uh, develop our area. You know, that's one thing as a gentleman by the name of Federal District Court Judge, the Honorable Reynaldo Garza used to say, you know, once you get educated, there's no stopping you, and that's one thing they can't take away from you. Now, thank you for the work that you do.
All right, in keeping with our policy, we want to, at this time, take an item out of order. We're going to proceed to item number 6A. We have present with us uh, our Texas State Senator, Eddie Lucio, uh, Jr., and he's here to recognize the achievements of our county treasurer. Judge Garcia, commissioners um, and citizens of Hidalgo County, I'm very pleased to be here this morning uh, to join with you. Uh, I would be remiss if I, first of all, Judge, did not congratulate you and the commissioners for the excellent work that is, is happening here and that's being done by you. Um, as you well know, I, I believe that county government is the closest form of government to the people. And, and I know there's um, citizens here today that obviously uh, feel, as we do, that we need to be involved and, and um, make sure we're part of the process. So I congratulate you for all that you do for the citizens of Hidalgo County. I'm pleased to have Hidalgo County as the biggest part of my district. <clears throat> today I come uh, before you, Judge, Commissioners, ladies and gentlemen, to recognize a young lady who has been exemplary in, in the service to the people of Hidalgo County. Um, she has a, a, a wonderful history of public service, uh, starting uh, way back uh, when she was elected mayor of, of Mercedes and served in the Rio Grande Development Council for a number of years. I think she's still very active for many years. Uh, today I want to recognize her as the outgoing president of the County Treasurer's Association of Texas. I was, um, I was very pleased and, and honored to get an invitation from Norma Garcia to swear her in when she became president of the Treasurer's Association. I was president of that association many, many years ago in 1976, so it, it gave her an opportunity to get to meet people from all over the state, 253 other counties, um, and, and um, share them what we're all about here in South Texas, I'm sure. She did a wonderful job, and I want to present her a Senate proclamation number 1359. Whereas the Senate of the State of Texas is pleased to recognize Norma G. Garcia, who had been named Outstanding County Treasurer of Texas, and whereas Norma Garcia was first elected Hidalgo County Treasurer in 1994, and recently began her fifth term in office she assumed this important position after having served three terms as mayor of Mercedes, and whereas upon taking office in 1995, she began computerizing the department's functions and working to improve many of its other processes. She instituted better checks and balances in the county's payroll department and implemented such, um, <clears throat> such program for the county's 3,000 employees. Whereas she has been active in numerous civic and professional organizations, she is a founding member of the Association of Hispanic Municipal Officials and has served as president of the Lower Rio Grande Development Council and the County Treasurer's Association of Texas. She was appointed by Governor Ann Richards to, ta to the task force that consolidated state agencies into the Texas Nat Natural Resources and Conservation Commission and whereas she had been, has had a profound impact on the efficient operation of Hidalgo County, and it's truly, it is truly fitting uh, that she received this prestigious honor, and now therefore be it proclaimed that the Senate of the State of Texas hereby commend Norma G. Garcia on her many outstanding achievements and extend congratulations to her on being named Outstanding County Treasurer of Texas 
and be it further proclaimed that a copy of this proclamation be prepared for her as an expression of high esteem from the Texas Senate. I, um, I'm going to re-represent, uh, re re-present to her uh, this gavel. It's a working gavel that she will keep, you know, in her in her office forever to to show that she was truly indeed for one whole year the president of the County Treasurer's Association. And with me, Judge, uh, Commissioners, I also have something very special that I, I'll, I'll show her at the end. I have this uh, portrait that... <laughs> <laughs> I have this portrait. Okay, come on up here. I want to present to you, Norman. Congratulations. Judge, I, Judge, Commissioner, I think you'll appreciate what I'm about to say. This portrait, ladies and gentlemen, has, has been in the discussion on immigration lately. It was really done by a young man who's a senior in college now, <coughs> who was brought here when he was five years old, along with his two brothers and sisters, and he had no control over that. His father abandoned the family, and this young boy has struggled over the years, but I met him at a little school called Lucia Middle School in Brownsville, and he just unbelievably showed me at that time when he was a seventh grader his God-given ability. But more important, that little boy has grown into an adult now, and he is very responsible. He wants to be an American citizen. He wants to join the military. He wants to do whatever it takes to be an American officially. And um, again, this is part of those that want to be part of the DREAM Act. And I can't tell you how emotional it becomes when you see grown young men and women like he is today, 19, 20 years old, um, who um, really want so badly to be part of our country officially. So I wanted to add that because um, I think it's important for us that live in this area of the country, um, who understand the culture, who understand that we have great neighbors and we're attached to, to Mexico um, in so many ways that we should continue to strive, we should continue to work hard together to make that reality for all these young men and women who are in our universities, colleges and universities, trying to make, make it better for their families and being productive citizens uh, of our state and country. So, Norma, congratulations. You have been exemplary, and, and uh, we're very proud to have you as our county treasurer, our star here in the Rio Grande Valley. Thank Gracias. You. This is quite a gavel. Is it bigger than yours, Judge? It is. <laughs> how, do, how do you follow and act like Senator Lucio? Uh, thank you so much, Senator, and uh, I know that the court recognized me when I first took office as president of the association, and he wanted to acknowledge that I had completed my term which actually ended in September. We just hadn't been able to coordinate our schedules uh, so that he could recognize me uh, with this resolution and also re-present me with this gavel that he gave me. Um, when I took office in Tyler, he was very gracious to go to Tyler. Uh, he was the hit of the evening because 35 years before, he had been president of the Association of County Treasurers. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they really enjoyed listening to him. A lot of them were still there, actually, that had been there when he was president. So um, again, Senator, thank you so much for taking your time to do this. Um, I really appreciate it. I enjoyed my year. Thank you, commissioners, for your support. Um, I know that on, on those travels, just for the record, that I, that I took with representing the association, the county did not have to pay for that the association footed the bill just in case the auditor says something. <laughs>
Thank you again. All right, our, our next item is uh, item 5B, the recognition of our veteran service officers. Yes, Judge Commissioners, uh, I'm Jaime Longoria with the County Judge's Office. I'm going to go ahead and read the caption. It's recognition of veteran service officers Emilio de los Santos and Felix Rodriguez on, outsta on outstanding veteran service officers for the Houston region. Judge Commissioners, uh, the, the County Judge's Office was recently notified of an honor that was bestowed on our very own Veterans Service Office. Uh, given the fact that Veterans Day is around the corner, uh, November the 11th, we thought it would be fitting that we would bring our veteran service officers in and, and give them the recognition uh, that they've actually received uh, through the Texas Veterans Commission. The annual Veterans County Service Officer Appreciation Award is bestowed for recognition of outstanding service to veterans, their dependents, and survivors by the Texas Veterans Commission. It's an annual award. The Houston region, my understanding of the Texas Veterans Commission actually encompasses everything south of Waco. So this is a very large region. It includes San Antonio and includes uh, Corpus Christi, everything all the way to, to the Rio Grande Valley. Our office here in Hidalgo County provides services uh, and assistance to veterans in completing applications, receiving rightfully earned benefits for themselves as veterans and for their dependents. They're most active also and, and most visible during the, 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 the times of sorrow for the county, the times that we actually lose uh, uh, a young man or a young woman in, in the service to our country. They spring into action, they coordinate all of the benefits, all of the, the services as they're taking place in Hidalgo County. The two officers in Hidalgo County actually serve a veterans population of over 25,000 veterans here in Hidalgo County alone. The two officers, Felix Rodriguez and Emilio de los Santos, uh, were recognized, and I'm going to go ahead and read the plaque at this point, Judge and Commissioners. They were recognized by the Texas Veterans Commission, presented to Felix Rodriguez and Emilio de los Santos in recognition of their outstanding service rendered to the veterans, their dependents, and survivors of Hidalgo County as an accredited Veterans County Service Officer. And it's signed by Robert Manchester, the Houston Regional Director of the Texas Veterans Commission. So I'd like to ask Mr. de los Santos and Mr. Rodriguez to come up and receive their awards. Emilio, congratulations. Thank you. Felix, on behalf of the veterans of Hidalgo County, congratulations. Thank you. I'd like to ask Mr. De Los Santos, as the director of, of the Veteran Service Office, to say a few words, Judge. Uh, 
<clears throat> Judge, commissioners, first of all, I would like to thank you for giving us the opportunity to represent our veterans from this county. We, uh, we actually have an estimated population of about 40,000 veterans in our county. That's 40,000? 40,000 plus. So it's, it, it all starts here. Uh, commissioners, county judge have always been very proactive in veteran issues and, and, veteran, uh, and getting them the support that they need, both with health care and both with their benefits. It, 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 you know, it's a very distinct honor to receive this type of awards because this represents that our office uh, submitted a great number of claims that were very successful and well-developed claims that were successful and that got the claims approved for our veterans. And this year, uh, our, our compensation and pension uh, numbers are in the approximately about $80 million. We, I know when, when I came before you for the first time, we were at 27 million. So it's been a good ride for 10 years and, and, and I've been blessed to have team members in my department that have been working closely together and achieving the goal that we have today. Um, part most, every other county really looks at what Hidalgo County is doing because they want to improve their quality of service also. Uh, so at this point, I would also like to take the opportunity to also address that on November the 11th, we will be honoring all our living veterans who serve in the armed forces. Those individuals, men and women, that served in World War I, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War, Desert Storm, Gulf War, Operation Iraqi Freedom, and Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan, and in the, in the time of peace defending our country and our freedom. These individuals are known as veterans served our country with honor, dignity, and respect. On Veterans Day, which falls on a Sunday, most of the events will be celebrated, whether it be uh, on Friday, Saturday, and we have one event on Sunday, and the rest of them uh, will be on the 12th. It is a time, and it's a special day, that we can say thank you to all our living veterans who fought in these wars, and we must not forget also those men and women who are in arms way right now. In closing, I must encourage everyone to remember Veterans Day as a special day and, and also an opportunity to thank our living veterans for their contributions and sacrifices. So when you meet or see a veteran, tell him or her, thank you for your service to our country. I would also would like to remind the public, our veterans, to exercise the right to vote today. And also, I would like to, at this time, uh, ask uh, my assistant, uh, Felix Rodriguez, if he has a few words to say. Okay. Judge, commissioners, ladies and gentlemen of the public, thank you for having us today. It is truly an honor to be before you. I want to add uh, to what Mr. De Los Santos has just, uh, just uh, said here is that the taxpayers in Hidalgo County are getting a return on their investment on the taxpayer money from the Hidalgo County Veterans Services Department. Truly, it is an honor to work with veterans. Uh, we work with the greatest people in the world, the best people in, in, that uh, we could work with. And those are veterans and their dependents. And again, we are at war. We are at war still. And we must all, always remember the sacrifices that our young men and women that are in harm's way are making for us here 
so that we can enjoy the freedoms that we have now. To be able to convene in peace without fear of anybody walking in here and threatening us with harm. Thank you again. God bless you all. And God bless each United States of America. Thank you, Felix. That concludes our, uh, our presentation here. And uh, th once again, thank you for the commitment that the, uh, the commissioner's court and the, our judge and our commissioners have provided us the, that autonomy to go out there and reach every veteran that we can and provide the services that we rightfully and they rightfully re uh, deserve. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, both of you, for the work that you do. The services that uh, you provide and we provide through you to the veteran community is, I mean, there's nothing, nothing better that we can do than to help out our veteran community in whatever services they are, they are going to be needing. But I do thank you. And by the way, Felix, it's becoming a habit, a good habit. Uh, this is your second recognition in, uh, I guess, in about two months. Keep it up. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Judge, could we have a picture, please? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. At this time, I'm going to take another item out of order. I'm going to proceed to item number 7G. We have one of our uh, judges, Mr. the Honorable Carlos Villalon, here uh, on a matter involving the Child Protection Court. Good morning, uh, Good morning, Judge. Judge one. Good morning, commissioners, citizens of uh, Hidalgo County. Um, I want to thank you for considering our request for a bailiff. Um, I've been on the bench. Let me go ahead and introduce myself. That's probably the easiest way for me to, to start this out. I just got appointed to the bench on in June of this year. Uh, the court is it, the court itself has been in existence for 13 years. Um, I was taken over. I took over the position for. Uh, Judge Ricardo Flores, who retired at the end of May. And uh, our court services Hidalgo and Star County, primarily Hidalgo County. We have over 450 cases. We do child support, or not child support, but child protection cases. Uh, that is uh, cases where CPS has removed children from their, from their parents because of abuse or neglect. And when we speak of abuse and neglect, we're talking anything from simple neglect, neglectful supervision of children to domestic violence to murder of a sibling or a child to uh, sexual assault, sex crimes, you name it, we have it in that court. Our court, or the, rather the cases that we have, are rooted in family violence which is one of the reasons why I, I asked and have requested for, uh, for a bailiff in this court. Uh, since I've been on the bench since June, one of the things that I get asked about every day is, why don't we have a bailiff? Why don't we have, why don't we have security in the courtroom? And amongst many of the excuses is, our court was a traveling court for many years. Uh, we traveled between four counties until about two years ago. And then um, we became stationary pretty much in Hidalgo and Star County. We used to borrow courtrooms, and we were able to utilize the bailiffs that were in those courtrooms. Um, but we no longer have that luxury because we have our own courtroom. Thankfully, we have our own courtroom, but we don't have a bailiff. And every day we encounter situations which can be very dangerous. Um, the nature of our case is, uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's rooted in family violence. Good. Many of the folks that we deal with, they have criminal charges pending. 
We do get prisoners in our courtroom from time to time with the only security provided it would be the, the jailer who brings them over. We have uh, many parents and children who suffer from mental illness, some of them very unstable. And when you combine all of these things into what is a, a charged environment where there is uh, animosity amongst family members, animosity between the family and the court, uh, animosity between the parents and the attorneys. It can be very, very dangerous. And so I decided to make this request and we've been meeting with Judge Garcia and his staff regarding uh, the inclusion of a bailiff with our court. And so I'm not exactly sure where, where I can go further with this. It's really well, a budgetary Judge, issue. We, let me begin, first of all, by thanking you for the good work that you're doing. Thank you. And I know it has to be very strenuous to be working under such stressful circumstances. I mean, uh, the emotions of all of the parties that are before you are at their highest peak. Uh, you're out there dealing with uh, custody issues and, and depriving individuals of the right uh, of their rights uh, as they're looking at them of the custody of their children and taking them away. I mean, I can imagine. Uh, I cannot imagine a more stressful situation and one that is more likely to generate uh, some kind of violence at some point. I don't think there's any question that uh, your court, I'm sorry that we haven't been made aware that there was no bailiff, uh, uh, but uh, I don't think there's any question that uh, the, the you need a bailiff. Uh, and, uh, you know, as we've all been uh, exposed to uh, most of the horrible cases that uh, are occurring in this county, many of them, uh, while many of them are related to, to drugs, uh, most of them are actually related to uh, domestic violence and family violence and violence within a family. And, and, uh, and when they come to court, you know, those emotions don't go away. I don't, the need is clearly there, and I don't know how the commissioners feel about that, but. I would agree with you, Judge. And, uh, I move that we approve one, two, and three. Second. All right. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Maybe a few. Thank you. All right. Let's move back. Uh, item at 5C, we an update on our Hidalgo County MPO program. Judge, commissioners, good morning. Good Thank morning, you for sir. allowing me the opportunity to update the court as well as citizens of Hidalgo County where we are on the MPO and some projects that we have developing over the next couple of months. Uh, I'd like to say first, we do have an enhancement call pro um, taking place right now through TxDOT. It's $1.3 million that are available for enhancements out there. Um, the definition of enhancements has changed a little bit. That now means uh, basically everything from restoration of historic transportation buildings to beautification of our roadways. Those applications are due November 16th, so I strongly encourage the county, any cities that may be interested in applying for those funds. There is an 80-20 hard cash match with that, but 80 cents on the dollar from the federal government is always good whenever we can get that into the valley for some beautification. I'm also uh, pleased to uh, talk about, I'm sure you've read in the paper, we will have some signage going up after the first of the year on uh, 83, 281, and 77, uh, limiting truck traffic in the left lanes. Uh, we've worked on this process with TxDOT over the last uh, probably year, uh, did some polling, did some talks uh, with the trucking industry. Uh, those left lanes will be used by the trucks for passing only, similar to what they do in San Antonio, Austin, the Houston area. Try to slow them down a little bit, get them out of the left lanes, uh, allow traffic movement. With that will also be additional signage. Uh, just reminding the public that the left lane is really there for passing only. Uh, we're trying to stop any artificial congestion that happens along our roadways by having people going much slower than the speed limit in the far left lane. So to try to encourage people to move over to your right-hand side to allow the faster traffic to pass. Uh, we also are working on a regional mobility update with the uh, Rio Grande Valley Chamber and the Lower Rio Grande Valley Development Council. That will be a three-county, all in companies all-encompassing regional plan, similar to one that was done 10 years ago. Uh, very happy to announce that all those projects that were identified in the last regional plan from 10 years ago have been built out, such as the expansion of US 83 and 281. 
So now we're trying to redevelop and update our plan so we can have something to take to our legislators to say here is our one voice in what we have in regional plans that we're hoping to move forward with. So uh, working with the chamber on that. Uh, I would also like to say uh, that uh, next week we are hosting on uh, South Padre Island our Border to Border Conference, which is a collective of individuals coming together to talk about the unique opportunities that avail themselves when doing transportation planning along border communities, whether it be the Mexican-U.S. border or Canadian-U.S. border. We have uh, about 150 individuals right now that are coming down. We're very excited about that. And we're, uh, we're most excited to be able to announce that uh, the Secretary of State, Hope Andrade, will be here as our keynote speaker on Wednesday afternoon out at Yves Le Grand uh, Hotel. So we're, we're very excited. She's taking out her schedule and sees the importance of the conference to come down, uh, address our guests and our, my staff, and visit with us for the afternoon. Uh, and I, I will also say that we're continuing to do project development. We encourage everybody to keep moving forward with your projects. We have worked very closely with uh, uh, the representatives for the county, LNG Engineering. Uh, I know that they've disseminated a lot of information out as well from the MPO on project development and trying to work with everybody to make sure to get those out. Um, because regardless of where some may see their project in the timeline that we have at the MPO, we want to encourage you to keep moving forward with developing it. Uh, once you have that project ready, we're going to work with TxDOT and we're going to get that project out the door. It doesn't matter to us really what year it's in. Uh, develop your project, get it taken care of. Our community is growing faster than our dollars for transportation, so we want to do all that we can to try to stay ahead of that curve and provide an adequate system to our citizens. And with that, I'll answer any questions. That's all the update I have for you in about three seconds. So, No questions, Andrew, but just want to thank you for all the help you've been given the precinct on some of the projects that we've been working. Uh, some of them are in the mill work, but we've seen some success. On working with the MPO in the state to get some construction dollars, and we look forward to working on some of those projects we're about to release. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. Cannon, thank you, sir, for the work that uh, you do, and I'd like for you to maybe make you a standing item every three months or something. I, you know, we, we, at least in our office, we don't hear that much from uh, the MPO. I'm here at the leisure of the court, Judge, whatever you would like. I'd be glad uh, to do so. There's a written memorandum that is sent out keeping um, the members of the court abreast, uh, please put us on, I will see on to the it. address list, or if there isn't, maybe there should be. Uh, I will implement that and make it happen for you gentlemen so we can keep all of you abreast of what's happening and developing. Well, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you for the good work. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Item 5D. Five D Judge, we request uh, respectfully request uh, no action on this item. Thank you, sir. Mr. Guerra. Thank you, Judge. Commissioners, um, there is no action at this time under item seven A one and two unless there's action to be taken further down the agenda. Um, item B is the uh, update on the uh, former administration building, first and second floors, as well as the uh, portable courthouse building. Uh, Mr. Sunday will be up there at the podium in a couple seconds. Um, we don't have any uh, item three, the emergency situations, the current exercise agenda. We have none. So, Mr. Sunday, you want to give everybody an update on the, uh, quickly on the portables? Yes, sir. Rick Sunday, Infrastructure Division. Everything is moving ahead according to plan and is on schedule. Uh, the major obstacles have already been overcome with no problem. Everything's working real well with the city. Uh, and uh, we may be done early in December. However, all of the courts that are planned to move in, they would prefer to just go ahead and wait until early January. Right. So nothing exciting to report. Everything's going real well. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank Welcome. you. Judge Commissioners, item C, under the AgriLife Extension, I'm asking permission for Cristina Perez to attend uh, Excellence Academy 2 in College Station. This would be November uh, 12th through the 16th of this year. Move for approval. Check. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. I'm also asking for Adelita Munoz and three staff members to attend the District 12 4-H uh, Food Show and Challenge in Laredo. Uh, that would be on December 8th of this year. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item D1 and 2 are related. I'm asking acceptance of a settlement check from... from what do I do? 
Allstate Insurance Company in the amount of $21,358.38. This would settle a uh, auto accident loss uh, with one of our county vehicles. Move for approval. Need a second. second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Judge Commissioners, item two, as this was a law enforcement uh, a loss, I'm asking authority for our sheriff, Guadalupe Trevino, to sign the uh, power attorney firm, uh, power of attorney forms uh, for title purposes to settle the uh, auto claims with all state insurance companies. So moved. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item E, I'm asking for uh, permission to uh, advertise. Uh, and hire the following positions, a billing supervisor, clinic A2, and uh, an eligibility specialist 2 and 1, respectively. Judge. Yes, sir. One of those uh, positions, 001-0034, is currently filled. Is that, tr is that correct? Judge. Uh, Commissioners, Eddie Olivares, Dallas County Health Human Services. That position will be vacant on the 16th of this month. So that's where the funding is going to be coming from. So the, the, we the, vacated? Is that what you saying? Yeah, the position we vacant the 16th of this month. This month. Okay. So, can you advertise at this point? That's I don't it. know, HR is. All right. Need a, Move for approval. All right. Need a second. Check. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And uh, item F, I'm asking uh, approval of a claim invoice for interpreting services. Uh, this was August 1st of this year, and it was for sign language services in the amount of $255. Uh, this would be with authority for the county treasurer to issue payment after review and auditing procedures are completed Show by move. our county auditor's office. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Thank you, Question, sir. Buddy. Are we going to be passing uh, item number uh, A? A? It's already been acted on, Mr. Rufus. Oh, well, you did? Yes, sir. We're at on 8A, okay, we're action, uh, yes, uh, based on the uh, uh, tax office, uh, no action on item 8A. All right, item 9. Uh, we have a representative from the constable's office. Um, Good morning, Judge, gentlemen, Deputy Joe Spinoza, on behalf of Constable Avila, I would like to uh, item Three five zero forty-five uh, discussion consideration approval to appoint John Paul Sauceda, Eliazar Mendez, and Jose Luis Fuentes as reserve deputy constable by Constable Avila Celestino Avila Jr. Precinct one, according to the Texas Law Government Code eighty-six point zero one two. This is only on uh, volunteers. Yes, sir. Move for approval. Need a second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Item 10, our health department. Morning, Judge Commissioners. Item 10A, discussion and action, including but not limited to indigent health care programs and ex, uh, expenditures. We're going to cover this, a lot of this information during the public hearing part, uh, right. Judge. So item A and B, uh, with the per permission of the court, we will take no action today. All right, sir. Let's proceed then to item 10C. At this time, we would convene a public hearing to consider public comments on regional health care partnership plan for Region 5. Uh, before it's submitted to the Texas Department of Health and Human Services Commission on November the 16th, 2012. Is there anyone here that desires to speak on this, on this issue? I'd like to give, with the promotion of the court, a brief overview, sir, and then see if there's anyone that has any questions once I give right, the brief overview. Ahead. Sir, I, I would like to acknowledge uh, our South Texas Regional Health Planning Program is being distributed to you now. I think Mr. Rufras is getting one. Get, did Mr. Rufras get one too? Yeah. 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 And uh, what that is is a, it's a USB with our plan. Now, our initial plan, which is not totally completed, I brought in the first section last week. Now I'm bringing in the second, third section, which is about 300 pages. Okay? So that's why we put it on USBs versus handing it out to 300 pages to each of you. So that's, that's available. I'm personally giving one to budget office. On there, let me just give a brief overview. The regional health plan, again, is a, it's a, 
is a partnership that we have between Hidalgo County, Cameron County, Willisee Hospital District, Willisee County Hospital District, and Star County Hospital District. Our efforts are to work closely with other partners in the community, such as MHMR, Tropical Texas Behavioral Health, uh, to work with Border Regions Behavioral Health System out of Star County, working closely with the University of Texas Health Science Center San Antonio and the UT system, Driscoll Children's Hospital, uh, Star County Memorial Hospital, Doctors Hospital, and working with Mission Regional Medical Center, Knapp Medical Center, along with uh, the Universal Health System, which is our five hospitals in the McAllen and Edinburgh area. Uh, our partnership is pretty extensive, involving many different entities and working hand in hand. Uh, as you, if you were to, once you open your file, this document just got back to us early this, this morning, actually, again. Uh, we have, this is produced and developed by uh, HMA, Health Management Associates out of Houston. They are our consultants who are assisting in completing this document. The final completion of this document will be done by November 16th and it will be submitted to HHSC, Health and Human Services Commission, to be reviewed by them. And if there is any changes or additions they would like, they'll inform us. That plan will then be submitted on December the 31st to uh, CMS, the Medicaid system at the national level, and they will review it with hoping adaptation and implementation of this plan early spring, March, April of 2013. Our primary goal on this is to look at the transformation and the transparency and support of Medicaid systems in Texas. As you know, we were uh, available to get an allocation of $801,878,996, approximately $802 million. As of this plan's draft writing, we've been able to develop and recruit as far as much as we'll, once we multiply out the, the multiplier, we're looking at $235,633,160 uh, will be looked at getting matched from, I mean, not matched, will be, the match will be received from the federal government out of the 802 as of this writing. We are working on getting additional IGT from other partners throughout uh, South Texas. We are in the, what they call pass one. Pass one means the first time that you're able to get this money. Pass two opens up next week where it opens up to other entities throughout the state where they may want to partner with us to provide services down here. So if you looked at this program, section one reviews the IGT partners and performing providers. Section two gives an overview of the plan uh, based at uh, $235,633,160. Uh, section three will be the community needs assessment. And then section four is the dish rep projects for categories one and two, which add up to 30 different dish rep projects partnering with Border Regional Behavioral Health Center, Doctors Hospital Renaissance, Star County Medical, Tropical Texas Behavioral, UT Health System San Antonio, Driscoll Children's Hospital, for, uh, for all these projects totaling up to 30 different projects. For the public to know, this whole plan of over 300 pages will be available to the public to see. We're working with Karina to get it on the county website, but we're also going to have it. It's currently available as of today at SouthTexasRHP.com. SouthTexasRHP.com, one long word, SouthTexasRHP.com, you can get access to it there. So the overall effort is to decrease uh, looking at uh, inpatient, uh, unnecessary inpatient uh, admissions into hospitals, decreasing ER, unnecessary ER admissions into hospitals, establishing medical homes, expanding the prevention education awareness in our community with the overall effort to get a healthier community, to be able to do a more efficient uh, healthcare system in South Texas. Uh, this is a, a very, very dynamic program that will go over the next four years here in, in the four county area in South Texas and through the entire state of Texas. In a nutshell, sir, I know it's a lot of information. I encourage you all, that USB is very, very important. Do not lose it. it and please, if you have a chance for you or one of your staff to review it, it's essential that you look at it and have a clear understanding of it. I'm open to questions before. Right. Uh, is there anyone here that uh, wants to make any comment or ask Mr. Olivares a question? Judge. I have a quick question from yes, Mr. Sir. Olivares. A week or two ago, court approved 1115 waiver plan. The first part. Part one? 
Yes. Okay. So I guess now you're asking for the approval of part two? This, the, the, for this part, this is the part that's going in as a draft. The final version comes on the 16th, and we'll be getting that soon. So we'll be looking at that. This has already been submitted. This is going to be part of the one that's going to be submitted to the state as well. The plan that was submitted, this is part of the ongoing plan, Mr. Ofracio. So it's part one, part two, and then the final one will be going in. So the action last week was to include all of these that were coming in. Uh, we're getting them as fast as we can get them from the state as well. Right. So this is part two, you're saying? Yes. The book right there? Yes. Okay. This one. Right. This I, was, the I was looking at it. It, it has some uh, uh, entities from Webb County. Is yes. Webb County part of the, uh, the region? Not our region, but there may be some partners in that, like Universal Health System. They have hospitals in Webb County, and since so Universal is part of ours. The other thing is the Border Region Behavioral Health is based out of Webb County, but they cover the mental health part for Star County. So like Tropical Texas covers uh, Cameron, Hidalgo, Willacy, the Border Regional Health folks, uh, Border Regional Health Center out of Laredo covers for Star County and those other counties and that way uh, west of us. Since Star County is part of our partnership, they're involved with us there too. Because the partnership is four counties, right? Hidalgo, yes. Cameron, Willacy, and Star? Well, just for officially, it's just Hidalgo County and Cameron County as counties, Willacy Hospital District and Star County Hospital District, just for clarity. Okay. Because also, Mr. Mr. Crane will correct me on it. <laughs> also, looking at generally, are we trying to summarize it, $802 million to be uh, given or granted to the, this area for health care over a four-year period? Over a four-year period. Now, the $802 million is not a given, sir. That is um, the total amount of match that's available for us. As of today, we've been only able to match two uh, 235 million 633,000 of the 800 million. And the beneficiaries will be uh, the, doctors the, and hospitals or just hospitals? It would be hosp this is primarily a hospital payment system, but also the way it works with DISHREP program that we will partner up with other outpatient prevention education awareness programs as well. So it will be a benefit to physicians and to different organizations in the community. Does the county get any kind of a direct uh, budgetary benefit uh, for purposes of our clinics, operation of the clinics, or, or for our indigent health care program? There is, there is no direct funding that comes to us except we as the anchor. We set that $3 million aside during our budgetary process that we could look at multiplying. Uh, and once we get that part going, that might co that'll come directly to the county. But we're looking during past two, the next phase, we're looking at working with the University of Texas uh, Health System out of San Antonio and maybe partnering up with them to have some physician assistants, some physicians based out of our county clinics. Can you look at how we can get a benefit such as cutting that eight, eight and a quarter million dollars that we spend on indigent health care? or on the operation of the clinics? We, we could look at that, sir, but that 8.25 8 8 million, 8 million that we've set aside, that is part of the uncompensated care plan, that's part of this plan. That is an integral part of the plan. Uh, I think what we could be looked at in the future to decrease in that would depend on the development of uh, a mechanism that would allow us to be able to get more IGT, and that mechanism may be in a form of a health district uh, to be looked at for the future. I know that there's some uh, legislation that's being submitted and proposed to be reviewed for potential health district development that would uh, allow a mechanism to be able to generate more IGT. Once, if that were to get operational, sir, I could see where uh, the county's overall investment may be decreased uh, once that, that was in place. Look at that issue as best you can. Yes, sir. All right, is there anyone else uh, that, or anybody Judge, here that wants to? Judge, uh, let's still. Yes, ma'am. Uh, let's hear from Ms. Uh, my question is this, and I haven't had a chance to look this over very clearly, but I did see some hospitals that are going to be doing residency programs, like four or five of them. And my question is, does that hospital then, will they see indigent patients, or will they be doing their teaching as a residency sponsored program only with insurance patients. Mr. Olivares? Uh, on uh, the residency programs, yes, there are several hospitals. Doctors' hospitals at Renaissance is in uh, 
Universal Health, I know, are working with the University of Texas Health Science Center San Antonio to look at bringing some residents in their facilities and to work with them. The objective is to be able to offset some of the ER admissions and some of that work. So I could actually see that happening, Ann, where they will be working with Indigent and working closely with them as part of the residency program. Our goal in the past two part is maybe we could partner up with UT and have some of those folks at our, actually our county clinics with a goal of developing one or two of our county clinics to be uh, kind of like a pathway to, to, for them to get help. So instead of a person go to the ER room, say for uh, a non-life-threatening illness, child with high fever, et cetera, uh, would be able to go to one of our clinics and, and be seen by the resident or the physician from the UT health system there. All right. I'm sorry, we can't hear you. You need to stay out here. Yeah, we're here for the minutes. To, that's why I asked you to stay. No problem. Some of the residencies are surgeries, which means they have to occur in a hospital, not in a county clinic. And that's where my concern is, is, is this going to really open up the door for more indigent patients who make more than 25% of the um, federal poverty level, which is the limit on the county indigent health care program, will, the, will these hospitals be opening their doors to the uninsured and underinsured? Does that make sense? That's what my question I'm is. I'm not sure if you can address that, Eddie. Eddie. Well, I, I think the main thing on the surgery program, as far as the hospitals have opened their doors to the indigent care population, they have them open now. I mean, they see them currently. They're part of our indigent health care program in Hidalgo County. So the doors have never been closed to the indigent. Now, is it going to be more accessible through the surgery programs? That's something we could work with the, the doctors and hospitals. I need to ask them. I don't know that answer. Right. But as far as accessibility and, and service, it's always been there. Thank you. Now, the auditor had a question. We need to move on. Uh, well, the, the question that I had was the IGT that the county contributed uh, a week or two ago. 8.25 million. Is that part of these uh, it's 800 part, it, or 235? Yes, it is. It, right. is. it is. And it's only under the uncompensated care. The 8.25 is not taking part in any form of dish rip, only UC. The UC? Mr. Okay. Thank you. And anybody else desire to make a comment? Yes, yes ma'am. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Linda Anaya Resendez. I re represent uh, Migrant Health Promotions. And I had a, the opportunity to, to review the document. And under the uh, section of healthcare infrastructure, it is, uh, there is a comment that talks about community health workers, uh, otherwise called promotoras. And I would like to urge uh, the uh, committee or the coalition that's working on this plan to really uh, look to using community health workers and Definitely. promotoras because uh, every research has shown that they are very effective in educating and uh, really teaching our people how to best uh, take care of their health and how to do pr disease prevention. So uh, we will be here available as partners and uh, Migrant Health Promotion does have a good expertise with the promotora model. Very good. Okay. The promotoras are a very large part of this, sir, uh, through, uh, uh, through our various partners and looking at new partners, hopefully, to, to expand it. But the whole thing is prevention, education, and awareness, and the promotora program here in South Texas is very successful, and it will be a primary form of uh, dealing with education in the community, right, sir. Thank you. Anyone else desire to make a comment? If not, oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> Very quickly, Judge. Good morning. I'm Terry Crocker with uh, Tropical Texas Behavioral Health. And Judge, I just wanted to add a comment to your uh, question moments ago in regard to indigent care. Uh, under the plan, our indigent care access and expansion will be uh, expanded by over a thousand people across our service network uh, that will be strictly for indigent care to behavioral health services. Sir, hold on, sir. Yep. Right. Sir, in fact, the whole issue with the Section 28, those 18 officers developing all that program, Mr. Crocker and his team, through this plan, they're the ones that have come up with the IGT to fund that. So really, Tropical Texas deserves a lot of credit and a lot of uh, kudos because they've really come forward and, and made things uh, more, more available to our community who, in the mental health field that need assistance. Eddie, is there gonna be separate funding or, but we, we fund the uh, MHMR. 
So the IGT they're providing is that additional funding or same funding the, that we get? The general revenue we get from the state has been designated as eligible IGT dollars, so we'll be using those dollars for the match. Right. Thank you. Yeah. In other words, our funding stays with them for operation, for their actions. This is state general funding for them. All right. Any, thank you, sir. Very thank you. Any other comments? All right. Well, thank you. At this time, we would cl close our public hearing on this matter and proceed to item number 10D. 10D, sir, at this moment, uh, I'll take no action on this item pending HR's uh, review, sir. Very good. Well, I'm glad to see you're getting involved, Esther. All right, item 11. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Quick item. Uh, it's just some uh, data card deactivations for the Emergency Management Department, so I'm requesting authorization and approval to deactivate the wireless devices as listed on the chart displayed on the agenda. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. That's it. Thank you. Have a good morning. Thank you, sir. Item 12, Urban County. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Our first item on the agenda is on behalf of Precinct 2, in which we're requesting. There's no B. I don't see a B here. Oh. No oh, action. No action. That was the one that uh, uh, they requested no action. Go ahead. Thank you. Precinct 2 is requesting authority to purchase solar lights for the South Tower Estates from Facility Solutions Group contract number 368-10 and approved vendor through Hidalgo County's membership and participation with the State of Texas Buy Board. The total amount for the purchase and installation is $230,400 to include shipping and handling, installation and discounts, and this shall be funded from the precincts year 23, 24, and 25, which is 2010, 2011, and 2012 street improvement line item. So moved. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Our second item is um, requesting the authority actually requesting commissioner's court consideration and approval to appoint the UCP executive director as a program compliance officer to ensure compliance for the following. Non-discrimination requirements contained in the Department of Housing and Urban Development regulations Im implementing the Section 504 and Equal Opportunity Fair Housing Office. This is a requirement based uh, provided to us by the Texas General Land Office uh, two of our contracts, both dated 20, 2012. Need a Before motion approval. to approve? Move for approval. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Item 13, our elections office. Hi, Judge Commissioners. Karina Cardoso with the Public Affairs Division. Mr. Ramon is predisposed at the moment. As you know, they're handling Elections Day um, coverage. So she asked me to present, and what I, uh, you see before you is I'm going to present how we are going to be posting the results for tonight's election on our county website. Um, I don't know if you all are familiar with the old version, but we have a new version that we're going to share, and people will find that it may be a little bit easier to uh, navigate. You can select, um, you won't be, you, you can, we're gonna have both the new version and the old version, so let me just go through it real quickly. So this is our elections website. This button here that you see will be posted on the main county website, so it'll be easy to view. And once you click on this button, it'll take you to the elections results page. And so I'm gonna show you first the old version, the way we used to do things in the past. It would just be a text file, open up a web page, you would see the results like this. We're still gonna have access to this one and um, this will be posted for it shows all of the results of all of the races. But we're also going to be doing this new version, which I think it'll be a little bit easier for the public to navigate and find the, the races they want to follow. So again, this is a new website. You'll just click on that button for the results, and this is how the website will show. So as you can see, it has all of them listed in an easy to read, user-friendly um, format. What you can also do is up here on the top, you can customize my search. So you can actually select the races that you want to follow. You don't have to necessarily show everything. Let's say you don't want to follow all of them and you would just want to follow the president and vice president. You would select the check mark box there and then press submit. And it'll show it as they're updating when all the precincts are coming in. 
So just wanted to share that with you all. Um, again, both versions will be available for those who are used to seeing the old version with the text file and just searching um, by the races like that, or you can see like this. Um, the other, there's a report tab up here where you, the results can be downloaded by a CSV file right here. Um, but that's about it. I just wanted to share that. Once again, this button, right now it's live. It's on the elections website. But tonight, once the results start coming in, we're going to put it on our main county website. Um, but we didn't want to switch it over yet because we know people are still looking for places to vote. So as you can see, this goes directly to the elections website where polls are open till 7 p.m. Once again, voters need to vote in the precinct that they reside in. And those locations can be found, again, on this county website as well. Does anyone have any questions about the posting of the results? Thank you, ma'am. OK, one, one last thing, uh, Judge and Commissioners. Ms. Rambon asked me to request from you a date for canvassing. She said the canvassing can be scheduled for Wednesday, next Wednesday or um, next Thursday, whatever the court pleases. And she'll be contacting you. Um, but if you want to just give her a date, either Wednesday or Thursday. What elections are we going to canvass? Um, I believe she said that you get a result of the, of, um, it's a federal, state, and county, I believe. The cities and the school uh, boards? They do their own canvassing. Their own. But you will get a summary. And she also asked me to, the, the way Eddie gave you a USB, um, instead of the whole 300 pages, she's going to be doing the same. She'll be giving you a CD, if that's OK with you. If not, you can request directly a summary, the printout of all 200 pages uh, from her directly. But she did ask me to ask the court if it would please them to canvas on Wednesday, 1114, or Thursday, 1115, whatever is best for the court. And what time of the day? Um, I believe that the, the location is available all day, so whatever time you choose. Commissioners? Whatever's convenient to you all, Commissioners. If she can do it Wednesday to get it out of the way, or if she needs an extra day, just tell her to let us know. Okay, I believe she said Everybody Wednesday would be available. be available. It would be good to do on Wednesday morning. So we'll schedule it and I'll have her inform the court. All right. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Karina, can you make sure that you coordinate with Monica for the posting? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. All right, item 14, our, our adult probation. Good morning. <clears throat> Rodolfo Perez for Mr. Patrick, adult probation. Yes, sir, good morning. Good morning. Uh, here on agenda item 14A, number one, request an approval to accept the DWI court grant from the Office of the Governor, Criminal Justice Division in the amount of 142-819-20 for the grant period of September 1st, 2012 through 831-2013. Is there any matching to that or is it just a 100% no, grant? No, no matching. Second. That applies to one, two, three, one, four, two, three, and five? Four. All right, those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Aye, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Item uh, eight, uh, 15, our Head Start program. Morning, Ms. Flores. Yes, we have an item on discussion and approval and appointment of one community representative for, by each uh, member of the Commissioner's Court to serve on the Policy Council Head Start, on the, on the Hidalgo County Head Start Policy Council for a one-year term according to 45 CFR Chapter 13, 1304.50. Um, B1, B7, beginning October 2012. I thought we already did that. My, I'm liking to appoint yes. my member, oh, okay. and my member for precinct one would be Mr. Richard Garcia. Richard Garcia. Yes, ma'am. Okay. He's a city manager with the city of Mercedes. Okay. We'll contact your office for uh, contact information okay. on Mr. Garcia. Thank you. Court has to, I'm sorry, approve the recommendation as they did with the others. I'm sorry. I'll go ahead and move to uh, approve uh, Richard Garcia being the representative for Precinct 1, the Hidalgo uh, County Head Start Board. Uh, those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank I'm you. waiting on the, till the results of tonight's yes. election for yes. Mr. Yes, we'll Bela. put it on the agenda for, the for next, board. yes. We'll put it on the agenda for next week again then. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Judge Commissioner 16A, uh, requesting authorization for surveys, meets and bounds, title reports, title policies, appraisals, review appraisals, and acquisition of additional right-of-way 
easements for the following subdivisions under the Colonia Access Program, Precinct 1. Ash Country, one parcel, La Milpa, one parcel, Tijerina, two parcels, one drainage easement and one right of way, and Delta West, one parcel for drainage. Move Would you approve? Second. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B, discussion and authorization for county judge to execute earnest money contract to purchase property on Horn Drive for a subdivision for drainage project precinct four and request county auditor to issue two manual checks payable to Valley Land Title Company in the amount of 1000 for the earnest money deposit and one for $100 to Hector Manuel Hinojosa et al. in the amount of $100 for option fee. Move for approval. Does Second. legal review this, John? Been legal review of these documents? Yes, the legal has reviewed this document. Right. Thank you. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Item 17A. Judge Commissioners, that's a presentation that I asked uh, to come forward and uh, be presented to County Commissioner's Court. Go ahead, sit down. Presentation by Intertech to promote community classes presented by admission advisors Armando San Roman and Bonnie Hernandez. Good morning, everyone. It's an honor to be here before you, judge and commissioners. We're so proud to be here to introduce to you our school. We're new to the Valley, and we just wanted everybody to know who we are and what we do. So we're passing out some binders to you as I read the PowerPoint to you. We are Intertech Technical School under the direction of Adrian Torres. And we want to just let you know about our mission statement. Our mission at Intertech is to launch you into a lifetime of lasting change. We believe there is no expiration date on potential. Our staff is Adrian Torres. He is the school director. Admissions, Mr. Armando Mando San Roman. Myself, Yvonne Bonnie Hernandez. We've got Isabel Contreras, our financial aid officer. You can raise your hand, ladies. They're a little nervous. Donna Handy, Director of First Impressions. Claudia Mesa, the receptionist. Erica Torres is our medical assistant instructor. We've got also Stella here as medical billing instructor. Jessica Martinez, our truancy specialist. Blanca Mendoza, our GED instructor. And Cassidy Mejia, the GED instructor. The courses that we offer, for those of you that don't know anything about us, we were a school in Brownsville, we're now in McAllen, is accounting office specialists. And there, they're designed to offer students a focused set of skills, and they can perform the computerized accounting environment. That's the type of career that they're looking at. Medical office specialists, which is really great because they can work in hospitals, nursing homes, in a bunch of different hospital doctor environments. We've got computer office specialists, which is really great for payroll, office procedures. We've got medical assistant. Students will learn to measure and record vital signs. They can work and obtain a lot of different things that are needed right now in the economy. These are careers that they can actually get jobs that the economy does offer for people. And when I say students, there is no age for anyone that comes to our school. We just signed up a woman for a GED class, 59 years of age. She says, that's the only thing I didn't have. She says, I'm about to put a business and I needed to seal the deal with my GED. So there is no age on education. We also offer ESL classes. This program is designed for adult students whose first language is other than English and who are seeking the basics of the English language. Their native language serves as a foundation for English language also. And of course, the GED. And we have two of the best instructors on board to offer these classes. And we just wanted, in a nutshell, to let you know who we were and what we believe in. In our school, we literally wear our heart on our sleeve. Lots of times at schools, people are just a number, not with us. We have personal teaching and training for the people that come. There is no waiting list with us. And we are hoping to touch everyone's heart to better entire Hidalgo County and then move on to Cameron County so that people have jobs, they have careers, and we in turn grow in the valley because the valley is always known as the heart of the valley. So that's what we're about, Intertech Technical School. And once again, it's an honor to present ourselves here to you. Hopefully we'll be working with different precincts and judges with the truancy programs for those that have nowhere to go and there's no hope for them, well, they can come see us and we'll get them that GED with no waiting list at all. Judge Commissioners, I would like to definitely uh, entertain that uh, each county commissioner, if you have the time 
to actually allow them to come into your precinct and present on a one-on-one -on -one to you. They already, I already was, I was very fortunate to have a presentation done at my precinct already, and I'm definitely entertaining that and supporting their cause, and hopefully uh, have some GD classes being instructed in my precinct. Uh, this is something that's been done in the past, and this is something that we want to do again. I do believe we need to create as much as much opportunity for our, our constituency base as possible. You know, there are a lot of people that are underserved at this point, and it's time that we op continue to open the doors for them. So I congratulate you and commend you on your efforts. Thank you so much. Just a question, how are you all funded? And is there a charge for the classes? Uh, yes, there is, a, there is a charge for the classes, but uh, right now what we're doing is uh, we are offering scholarships on behalf of the school, and we also have alternative financing, which is basically like financial aid, it's practically the same thing. And uh, you know, the payments don't come in, into effect until six way uh, six months after the, uh, the uh, certification of the, of the uh, students. So we're looking to ways, and we're also right now also trying to apply for funding, federal funding and state funding to be able to accommodate for all those students in the need. It wouldn't directly impact the county as far yeah. as the charges concerned. We're, we're looking for ways to make it easier for, for all those students to be, you know, give, give a positive impact with the school. So that's, that's our motive and our goal to be able to help the community as well. Well, thank you. I hope you're extremely successful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bonnie, thank you very much for your Thank you. It was an honor being here. Thank you so much, Judge Commissioners. God bless. Thank you. Next item, uh, 18. Morning, Judge Commissioner, Sergio Cruz, Department of Budget Management. Item 18A is uh, a, a authorization to change TCDRS plan provisions for planning year 2013 to include a 3% cost of living adjustment for retirees. Move to approve. <laughs> Second. Get away. Wait. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those against him, sign. Motion carries. Next item, Sergio. Item 18B, uh, one is uh, a and B, uh, approval of certification of revenues and appropriation of those funds into the Precinct 1 Road Maintenance Program in the amount of $47,727.87. Move for approval. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? There's a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. All those against him, sign. Motion passes. Go ahead, Sergio. 18B2 is approval of 2012 appropriation of funds into the Precinct uh, 4 Road and Bridge uh, Maintenance Program in the amount of 116000 uh, Five hundred fifty-two dollars. I move to approve. Second. There's a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those against, same sign. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you, commissioners. Ms. Salazar. Good morning, Martha Salazar for the purchasing department. Good morning, ma'am. Um, item nineteen nineteen A one two A B and C no action or reports to be given. Item three is acceptance and approval of the final negotiated engineering. Uh, agreement which includes the best and final offer with air evac life scan for emergency for emergency post-tax voluntary air ambulance services tell me tell us about that man. this is a this is a product that that uh, the employees can purchase it is not it does not qualify under section 125 but it does give you a supplemental extension of what a an ambulance service that may need me to be transported a loved one to someone outside the valley or within the valley uh, that your insurance wouldn't cover. So it's just for transporting. It's not under emergency situations. It's it, it it'll cover an emergency situation also. Yes. So our our carrier does not cover that as. Yes, it does. But this supplements it with additional services that you may not have under your group health. Which are what? Uh, there are the, for example, if I, uh, if my uh, carrier, if my group health does not transport my husband for a transplant, if he's called, I can, I can okay, so ask. Okay, so basically for, yes. for family members' transports. Exactly. Okay. And how much is it going to cost? There is a scale uh, for the employee. It's post tax, and it's an nominal monthly fee. All right. Move for approval. Second. The motion to approve. There's a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I was going to say sign. Motion passes. Go ahead, Marty. The next item is acceptance and approval of the evaluation for the sole proposal received from Vasaldu and Associates for the purpose of ranking by Commissioner's Court as qualified so as to proceed to the next phase of the process, 
for Turnkey Solutions for Middle and High School Digital Credit Recovery and Life Skills Program. This is being uh, funded by a grant that was secured by the 370th District Court, and this is to avail those, uh, those individuals who need to uh, continue their education or complete it under this program. Move for approval. Second. Motion to approve. There's a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those against, same sign. Item B Motion would be passes. approval of the final negotiated contract between Hidalgo County with concurrence by the 370th <coughs> District Court and Vasaldura and Associates for the turnkey solution that I just spoke about. Move for approval. Second. Motion to approve. There's a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those against, same sign. Motion passes. We're requesting authority to advertise and approval of qualifications, requirements, and scope of services as attached here too for the Hidalgo County Annual Pool of Professional Services for those listed from A through E. And that's as we have our protocol selected on an as needed basis per project. This is on an annual basis, ma'am? And this, yes, it's an annual pool and it'll be effective in uh, February. Marty, mm -hmm. I don't see the, um, are we not gonna do project management anymore? Or? We project management right now hasn't, hasn't lapsed. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is a question. I didn't no, see one right. Here. Move for approval. Second. There's a motion to approve. There's a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against the same sign, motion passes. Thank you, Mark. Uh, item six, A, B, and C. Commissioner, you weren't here earlier for the discussions that were had <clears throat> of, within the drainage district portion of the meeting. Uh, we are going to wait one week. I am obtaining information from the current carriers. Marty, Marty, Marty. One week, I don't think it's going to be enough. Pardon me. It may take two. It, it, uh, you it, know. It, it, Why don't you just schedule it two weeks from now? What we're going to be uh, doing is receiving commitments from the current providers mm -hmm. to stay with those uh, individuals who currently have products with them in the event they are securing benefits, especially someone under cancer or critical care right. or anything of that disability, that type of, uh, uh, of, uh, of product and come back with some options for the who, court. Who did the court uh, appoint to be in the committee now? We need the committee was a members, for, uh, there was Mr. Marcos Lopez from four. But I think, I think we should change that. I think you need to be involved to give more information on really digest and, I mean, dissect it and tell us exactly what's going on because Certainly. what y'all gave us didn't really sh so show us anything. Other than numbers, yes. What about the long term on the, on the thing? I mean, on are, do, you don't think we're gonna have to go out there and re-advertise There's again? one. That may be an option I bring back to you. That's why I'd like to bring it back as soon as possible for you because an option may be that the court, uh, under the RFP that went out, we, we specifically said we wanted products that were no loss, no gain. You know, what Yet I want to do is most of get the best product for the employee and actually the-, the Correct. The and we also don't want this imposition of pre-existing pre conditions and being I, excluded. You know, for example, there's some employees here that got some I have some Family in my members. own office. I have a, a product that I would be losing, and, and, and it's and in the supplemental life insurance uh, area. I don't think so it's fair for the employees. I am going to bring you some options, one of them being that we reject what we received and put out a very specific RFP that does not, that tells, uh, tells these carriers uh, we will not accept pre existing condition clauses to yeah. be excluded. Uh, yeah, so that probably... should narrow the field because if they really want to sell their products, they're going to consider that. Now, this doesn't fall under the uh, 2014 uh, date for uh, this would in be included had the 2014 date already come, but it hasn't. Uh, no one can be excluded for pre-existing Yeah, because when I looked at it yesterday, it didn't look right. That's why I called you. Correct. And that's why we had the subsequent phone calls with all of you. Yeah. So uh, I am going to ask for no action at this time. Marty, can you allow more than one uh, company to uh, submit proposals yes. and allow the employees to select from the best one that they uh, That's another question I it, had. That's, well, I don't know that we put out our RFP in that fashion. I will have to explore that because it was asked of me this morning whether you would have more than one provider. Uh, would that be possible? I will look into it. I don't know of anyone who does, other than grandfathering in your existing coverages. That does not permit the existing vendors to seek new employees. They would only be keeping what they have. But whether we can have more than one uh, provider of cafeteria plan products, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to be very was, honest with you. When I was employed with the state, that's the, the process that we did every year. We had several individuals present, 
and the employees would then select uh, the best one that they liked. And if that's a, uh, and if that's an option, that'll be included in the next round. Marty, can you defer to the the ones that were on the committee, kind of breaking down a little further? Uh, at the end of the day, I think everybody's heart's in the same place. There's a lot of vendors out there. We Correct. want to make sure that we give the at the bottom line is the employee. Make sure that they're given the best options out there. Correct. If it's a choice between two or three companies, or provide the best product and let them choose. And when uh, I, when I bring this option to you to to reject and and re-advertise, if that's something you want to do, we will include that. I certainly will be happy I to agree. commission. I'll be happy to be in it. Because from what I see on the scoring grades, somebody didn't even read them. Okay. <laughs> so and you know what I'm talking about. All right. They didn't look at them. What's the best for our employees? So All right. you need to go on so, there and look at well, it. And there were so many. I mean, that, that so, is one thing. It was. Yeah. So the there committee so many. is constructed of a member of each yours precinct. Yours was right. yes. Yours in your case right. was Mr. Gonzalez. It was right. Mr. Silguero. It was Yolanda Chapa. It was uh, Mingo or Mona, I can't remember. And then it was Marcos. Okay. Yeah, but it's very hard the way you gave us to figure Correct. out. Correct. We can structure the committee to be different if we go out on another round, which it is a possibility I, that I can present to you. So going on then to item six, no action. Going on to item well, seven. Marty, let me just make a comment. Yes, sir. Keep in mind, at least from my point of view, mm -hmm that we need to keep the employees in mind. Let's not do anything that is going to hurt. Uh, Those who have right. situations at this time that would be jeopardized. Yeah. I understand fully, Commissioner. Thank you. That's a great, so. Yes, sir. You did, you did uh, tell me that yesterday when, we, when I contacted you. Marty, we just uh, recently uh, reviewed and evaluated a, a proposal uh, that was graded by a committee. Yes, sir. And. Uh, we uh, have reviewed a, a guide that the state has, and what they recommend is for the graders to have some kind of expertise in the area that the, the, the contract they're trying to get. Mm -hmm. For example, you need to get someone that knows about insurance mm -hmm. to be able to grade the proposals. Uh, and in the past, uh, Mr. Fresco, we used to have a consultant for this. Right. What happened was that we were able to secure long-term agreements that were renewable, and in that instance, the court decided not to continue with that type of consulting service. But it is something that they may want to con consider. Oh, thank you. Uh, if, if I can move on to item seven, requesting approval of commissioner's court of exceptions to Adele County's purchasing policies and procedures that require at least three quotes for re requisitions of $1,000, uh, of more than 1,000 but less than five for the following, including authority to issue payment and this is A, Hidalgo County Tax Office, acceptance and approval of invoice number 1944714, dated uh, September 20th, in the amount of 116520, with PO number 681246, from General Binding Corporations, that GCB. And uh, we ask for that to be approved for payment. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Item B is Hidalgo County Human Resources, and this is acceptance and approval of invoice number 150148A, dated August 16th, in the amount of 3,771.20, PO number 678920, from T and G Identification Systems Incorporated. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 I motion carry. And item B1, this is for the Sheriff's Department, pursuant to Texas Local Government Code requesting exemption from, co from Commissioner's Court uh, with an order granting same from competitive bidding requirements under 262024A2, an item necessary to preserve and protect the public health or safety of the residents of the county. And B, this is pursuant to Hidalgo County's uh, Purchasing Policies and Procedures, Chapter 9, approval of the emergency request for the following requisitions with detailed circumstances supporting documentation, user department's notifications for the following. That's number one is requisition. I, I'd like to take them all because I think they're all related to the same thing. Requisitions uh, detailed in numbers one, two, three, four, and five. These are all renewals or maintenance of support of software systems that are in, zi that are in existing use. The only request I have is going to take A separately from B. Oh, oh let, let, I need, yes, action on A. Move for approval. Second. Then. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And then B would be including one through five. 
Move approval. Move Second. approval. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, now, on item C, this is approval to rescind, and I'm going to defer a little bit here to legal counsel. We had already obtained uh, authority to purchase some of these in previous uh, commissioner's courts, but because we had to enter an emergency situation where some of these services had actually been interrupted, uh, we don't know if it's appropriate to rescind that since we've now done an exemption. Uh, I think the other, which you, we didn't want to put each the cart of those, before the Each of those did have the 30 day termination clause, right? Yes. Actually, the, the proper procedure would be to terminate to those rescind, contracts. To, to rescind the action. Well, they're included at the top. We have not issued the POs. We haven't released them. You haven't issued the POs? We haven't released them. I still think so termination is better. Okay, I can put them next week. Why don't we say rescind? Well, next week put rescind. Uh, next week just put terminate. Could we do it okay. today? We'll, we'll and judge. We just word it properly and you just tell us what that motion should sound like. They're all being awarded at the no numbers one through five anyway. Even though you already approved just the... Uh, All right, we're going to defer it to next week then. Okay, I'll, I'll get together with, uh, with legal counsel. No action on that I, one right now? No action on C1, 2, and 3. Item C, presentation of the responsible vendor submitting the lowest and best bid as detailed in tabulation sheet contained herein containing three bidders and meeting all specifications and requirements for the purposes of award. Approval of the contract to that bit to the low bidder is Roy's hauling and request for bids listed for pit run Caliche base. Move for second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And the next to the last, I mean the last, is requesting approval of a professional engineering services agreement with LNG Engineering Laboratory, LLC, for professional geotechnical services on an as-needed basis. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. This time I would call on Ms. Opal Billman. Good morning. My name is Opal Billman. I would like to speak briefly about my continued false imprisonment. The judge had one job, to give a fair division of our community property to the two people who own it. The judge determined our community property could not be divided and court appointed our son to manage the community property of his parents, which kept our community property intact untouched, undivided. Then the judge appointed a beneficiary for our community property. There is no settlement between Joe and me of our marital estate, but now there is a court-appointed manager and a court-appointed beneficiary for it. Pay attention to this, please. Under Texas law, the community property remains owned, undivided by Joe and me, because that's the way the judge left it, in pursuit of a court-appointed manager and a court-appointed beneficiary for our community property. Our son filed with the Office of the Secretary of State for a Billman Real Estate LTD Corporation and a parent company, in other words, a holding company. The Office of the Secretary of State certified our son's corporations. Why? Our son had no business assets. Specifically, what did the Office of the Secretary of State certify? Community property is owned by two people. It cannot be sold, conveyed, or given away by just one of the owners. Joe had descriptions of our land made into two deeds to convey the two deeds into our son's state's certified corporations. The two deeds are signed by Joe only. Under Texas law, the deeds convey nothing. The concept that instead of a division of our community property be between Joe and me, the community property would remain untouched and be conveyed into a state certified corporation was so far-fetched 
that I said the Billman Real Estate LTD did not exist. I even wrote to the Securities Exchange Commission requesting information. Their response was they had no information about a Billman Real Estate LTD. However, I received a letter from the Office of the Secretary of State recently. While not claiming that our community property is an asset, did state that a Billman Real Estate LTD does exist. To claim that our community property is an asset of the Billman Real Estate LTD would be a felony. To actually form a corporation using our name for the sole purpose of harboring all of our community property until the court appointed beneficiary can claim it is not a divorce settlement. It is grand larceny. Thank you very much for your time. Ms. Billman, uh, I just want to make sure that, uh, that I advise you that this court has no jurisdiction over this matter. And I this, live in Hidalgo County. I like to speak to the board about my false imprisonment. No, I just wanted to make you aware that we have no way of changing any, any part of the outcome. It, it, it does not lie within the jurisdiction of anything we, we uh, are able to do. Okay. All right. Thank you for letting me express myself. Yes, ma'am. I will be glad to do that any day of the week. Mr. Frank uh, Travers. Thank you, Mr. Travers. At this time, pursuant to 551071 and 072 of the Texas Government Code, need a motion to proceed to executive session. So moved. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries.
exceeding $500 uh, in costs uh, over and above the initial agreement to come back to Commissioner's Court. I do want to disclose that to the court and ask the court uh, to acknowledge and take action that uh, we are uh, authorizing the firm to conduct the IMEs. All right, sir. You don't need action then? Yes, I, I, I'd like to action. motion to approve. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And item 22G, Hidalgo County versus Guerra Construction Judge Commissioners, I do want to disclose and uh, tell the court uh, that uh, we do have a compromise settlement agreement and release arising uh, out of a mediation with Guerra Construction. Uh, so I'd like for Commissioner's Court uh, to, uh, uh, to take a uh, motion and action on the compromise settlement agreement and release uh, uh, as it pertains to Hidalgo County versus Guerra Construction. Action? Yes, sir. Yes. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Judge Commissioner, all appropriate documentation with respect to what we've discussed today will be uh, uh, properly executed and uh, provided to all parties, uh, the auditor's office, and uh, more importantly, and most importantly, the uh, uh, Hidalgo County Clerk's office. Thank you, sir. Mo need a motion to adjourn. to adjourn. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge.